Hey guys and girls and welcome back to episode 10 in this series where we are building a GraphQL API in Elixir. Um, so what we want to do in this episode is implement some functionality to check if a user is authorized to run our queries and mutations. Because in the last episode what we did is we implemented a plug that whenever a connection comes into our API, we look at the connection, we get the token out of the connection, we see if the token is valid, we decode the token and now we grab the user that belongs to that token and put it in our connection so that whenever we hit the schema, we have access to the user in our queries and resolvers. Um, but at the moment, we are not doing anything with the context. We could implement it manually um, and run a function um, before every mutation and query that checks if in the context there is a user with a certain role and then only run it if the user has the correct role. Um, but we can also just implement something called middleware, which makes it a lot easier to implement this functionality. So what we're going to do is first we're going to make a new branch and we're going to call it at authorization middleware middleware there we go and what we're going to do is in our schema folder we are going to make a new folder called middleware And in here, we'll make a file called authorize.ex. All right, so let's call this dev module. We call it medium GraphQL API web dot schema dot middleware. Not sure why it's auto completing. There we go. And the file name is authorize. Okay, and if we want to make middleware for absent, we need to define it up here and we say behavior, behave, behavior, absinth dot middleware. Um, and what the absent middleware always expect is a function call. And this function always takes in the resolution. And we are going to change something. We're going to put something else in here as well. Um, so the resolution is the data structure that gets piped through all of our functions, our schema functions. Um, and in the resolution is what we defined in our plug, which is the context. So we put options here on the resolution, which is the context. So if we go to authorize again, we know that this whole middleware is going to do something with the role that the user is going to provide. So we're going to add role here. So we want to check the resolution. So that is the data structure that gets into our query or mutation. So what we can do here is say, going to make a width block again. And what do we want to check? We want to check the resolution of context. And the context is what we defined in the plug, which is the current user. So we can say, okay, if the resolution dot context has a map with the current user, because that's what we called it. And if the role is correct, and we are going to implement that line of code in a second, we are going to do something else. We'll do something. So if the current user and the role is correct, both returns true. We just want to return the resolution. We just want to continue what we were doing. If they don't match, so for anything else, we want to get the resolution. And 
and we want to put something in the resolution and you can do that by calling absinthe dot resolution dot put result and we can put in the resolution an error with the string unauthorized Okay, so how are we going to check the uh, if the role is correct? What we can do is we get the role as an argument. So we can say, okay, we want to make a function called correct underscore role, which takes in the current user and the role from the arguments. And if that function returns true, we will return the resolution. Else, and let's put this on the line below. There we go. Else, we will return the resolution, but we put into the resolution an error with unauthorized. So now we need to make this function correct role. So this ends here. We can either make a case statement or by pattern matching, we can make a few small functions. Correct role, question mark. And what we'll check in this function, it takes in the user, which is a map, and it takes in the role. And we can say, okay, if the role matches any so if in our query or mutation we say okay anyone can run this we are going to return true and if you put a function on one line you can just simply do do and then return what you want to return um, then we're going to have another function that takes in the user but we're going to look up the role on this user map and if it matches the role that we provide it's going to return true and then we have the edge case if there is no user and we didn't provide a role we will return false So what happens now is the resolution and the role go into this function. We check if there is a user in the context. Then we check the user, if the user has the correct role that we provided in the mutation and the query. If it's true, we're just gonna return the resolution. Otherwise, we are gonna put an error in the resolution that says unauthorized. So if we wanna implement this now in our schema, we go to our schema file, of course. And what you can do here is we're going to alias it, alias it just below the resolver, alias yungafiweb.schema.middleware, schema.middleware. There we go. And what we can do now is on, for instance, a query before the resolver, we cannot put this middleware and you can do it by middleware and we're going to point to our middleware module. So middleware dot authorize and we pass in the role that we want to check against the user. So in this case, we only want to run this query when we authorize that there is a user in our context, but we don't care what the role is. So let's take a look if we can run our server now.
I will take a look at the warning in a second. So if we run this query, we get the data back. But if we remove a character from our token, it's invalid. So we shouldn't get context. And we can see that it's unauthorized. So now we have a way to check if we have a user in our context. And at the moment, it is running this query on any role. But if we just want to run it when a user is registered as an admin, we can change this atom any into the role that we have in our database. And at the moment, we only have the user um, role set in our database. But we can say, um, just to check it, admin. Um, and make sure I made a little mistake. This shouldn't be the atom role, but we need to match it with the role that the user provides. So it's going to be the role variable. So if we check it now and go into our GraphQL endpoint and run it again, we can see that it's unauthorized. That's cool. And if we change it to user, this should work. So now we should get, yeah, there we go. We get a data back. And if we change the role of Bob, we're logged in as Bob now in our database. Let's see, where's Bob? Bob is two, Bob has a user role. If we change it to admin, save changes. And we run this. Run, run it when it's an admin. We can now see that that is also working. So great, we can now check if a user is logged in if it's in the context, and we can run queries and mutation based on the role. So for this one, we are just going to set it to any at the moment, we might change that in the future. So that is our authorization layer of this application finished. So let's kill our server. Um, and let's commit our changes. So I'm going to stage this and say implement authorization middleware. And then import authorization middleware in schema file. Save that. And now this is clean. So let's get flow feature finish. And git push origin develop. So now the code is on GitHub. So you can see it. Okay, that's it for this episode. Um, in the next episode, what we probably want to do is either implement a second uh, middleware, which is gonna handle the errors whenever we do a mutation or we get we don't get data back or we might finally implement um, creating a blog post um, but i'll have to think about that so thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next one